Our next presentation, Passkey with a small p, is Passkeys on Android. Uh, our presenter is Christian Brand, who's a, a group product manager at Google. Thank you, Christian. Okay, if this is working, can folks hear me? Yeah, there we go. Thank you, Adrian. Okay, now I have lots of bottles. I'll put this one here. <clears throat> Hi, folks. I'm Christian. Uh, nice to see you all here at Authenticate. Uh, definitely bigger turnout than last year, so this is fantastic. Um, I want to talk a little bit about passkeys on Android today. Um, my passkeys have a capital P, but that's just because it's at the beginning of a sentence. It should be a small p. Maybe Android passkeys would have been a better title. Anyway, okay, <clears throat> let's get started. So first, um, I'm here to talk about passkeys. I think everyone here probably knows what passkeys are, but one more time for the folks in the back, I will do a quick one-slide recap before jumping into the rest of the uh, of the content here. Um, what are passkeys? So passkeys are nothing but standard FIDO or WebAuthn credentials that folks here have been used to ever since I think uh, we started dealing with discoverable um, credentials on, on devices, platform uh, devices here. Um, so you make one in the same way that you make a FIDO credential, but the real differences are kind of like threefold. Um, this is not like a canonical, like exhaustive list. This is kind of like the way that I like to think about the difference between, um, you know, FIDO credentials and passkeys, uh, or, or the additional benefits you get from using a passkey. Uh, but essentially, there's three things. Uh, the first one being passkeys sync, or as John said in the previous presentation, as it's kind of like called out in the spec, they are backed up, right? Um, that means they're resilient. So if you create a passkey on one device um, and the user you know, loses access to that device, or they might just own more than one device. Um, passkeys synchronize. So if I create one here, the passkey is available on another device. Uh, you know, typically if I lose access to a phone, it breaks, stuff happens, or I upgrade my device, I don't have to start from scratch. Um, and that is what allows us to really, truly start to get rid of passwords. It is this concept that allows us to step beyond just having a password as, you know, or, or a, 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 I guess a biometric or a screen lock as a convenience factor. Like we've had that ever since, I think it was the iPhone 5S that introduced Touch ID for the first time bringing biometrics kind of like into, uh, into the mainstream. Biometrics on those devices are not a security measure. It's a convenience measure. You can always fall back to your traditional authentication mechanism. And that has to some, you know, it has to be there because the biometric would, you know, inevitably at some point, maybe, you know, finger is sticky or wet or whatever, and you can't authenticate. There is no fallback usually. Um, and at the same time, when you lose access to your device, as someone does, um, you'll need to, you know, start from, from scratch again um, and bootstrap the device back into getting your convenience factor set up. For the first time ever with the synchronization of pass keys, um, we are truly moving beyond needing a fallback. Um, because the passkey is supposed to always be there. We'll talk a little bit about like how that gets to be there, but the passkey is supposed to always be there, and it's at this point the job of the platform provider or the passkey provider, which might or might not be the platform, um, to allow the synchronization to happen. You authenticate back into your platform account, and at that point, all your passkeys are available to you again. Um, now, users might not always be in devices of the same ecosystem because that's the other thing that's different from password managers uh, and the way that passkeys work. Typically, a password manager works kind of like wherever you are. That's one of the claim to fame, right? I'm on Chrome on Android. I'm on Chrome on Windows. Uh, my Google password manager will synchronize my passwords between these platforms. Passkeys work a little different. Um, passkeys sync within, kind of we call it ecosystems today. Uh, so if you have a passkey that you create, for example, on an Apple device, on iOS, you should be able to get that passkey on your Mac and on your iPad as well. And on the Android side, if you create a passkey on Android, you can use it on other Android devices. And in the future, we're hoping that that'll also work on other Chrome, Chrome OS specifically devices. Um, that does not mean if I create a passkey on Android and Chrome that that passkey is available on Windows and Chrome. Uh, and there's various reasons for that. I'm not going to go into all of the details here. Uh, one of them being security. We can have better security guarantees when we actually delegate the storage and the management of these down to the platform. Uh, and the other one being better integration. Uh, if I, for example, create a passkey on App X, let's say Facebook, App X, it's now going to be a thing supposedly. But like, if I create a, a passkey on like some application on you know iOS, for example, Facebook uh, passkey. Um, I would like that passkey to be, be available on the web as well. And that really only works if the web browsers on iOS can tap into that passkey storage solution that's down in the platform. Um, we don't want this segmentation where, you know, I create a passkey in an app, 
suddenly I open a browser on that same device and the passkey is not, not there. That's what we get with password managers in some cases today. And that's kind of okay because I can always go to the password manager and write down my password or copy and paste it. That's not possible with passkey. So we had to do better. So kind of that's the, the, the first point here. Uh, I promise I won't go on as long for each of the three. Um, the other one being cross-device, right? So if I'm on a device which does not support passkeys today or does not have my passkey available, I guess that's the more pertinent way of putting it. Um, if I'm on that device, let's say I just created a passkey on Android and I now go to Windows and I want to sign in there. Um, we need the user to be able to use their passkey there. With passwords, that typically meant that I had to retype the password from my one device into my other one. Can't do that with passkeys. So we have a technology available that allows us to use the passkey from one device on another. Um, it's kind of like a, a, a hybrid, protocol is also called hybrid, between like a local Bluetooth connection as well as like some magic happening in the cloud in the background. But in essence, you're able to use a passkey on a you know, stored authenticator, which might be an iOS or an Android uh, phone that the user might carry around on some other device um, in, in a secure way. And one of the big benefits here, of course, is because there's a local proximity check happening in the background, the technology is, is uh, strongly phishing resistant, which means the authenticator and the device on which you're trying to sign in must be physically proximate, which immediately cuts down on most of the phishing attacks, which happens when the attacker and the user they're trying to you know, defraud is not in the same physical location. Um, some folks might now call out, yeah, well, now you've kind of reduced the attacks to like someone sitting next to you in Starbucks. Yes, that's exactly what we have done. We've kind of like changed the, the paradigm and changed the game from being able to fish someone across the globe somewhere to someone now being in physical proximity and being able to kind of like see your screen and scan a QR code. Um, so essentially, we've kind of like, you know, reduced the attack surface by, uh, you know, I don't know, orders of magnitude, multiple ones. Um, and the last one here being the discoverable point. Um, up until this point with FIDO credentials, uh, you can create a FIDO credential, it's there. Um, but you kind of have to know that it's there to use it. Like a system has to know and has some idea about a FIDO credential being available on a platform. Now you can already think about, you know, the way through which this usually happens is the website or the application might like store some session data, maybe a cookie, maybe some app data. Um, but what happens when I suddenly now move from an old device to a new one, or I create a pass key, you know, on my iPhone and suddenly I end up on my Mac and I boot the device up, how does a website now know a passkey is there? And that's been something that we've been struggling with for a long time. Um, you know, how do we tell relying parties and, and, and applications that passkeys are available on this device um, without leaking kind of like, you know, privacy sensitive information about like the user having logged into the site before, uh, you know, without involving the user in that, in that sequence. Um, and what we came up with here was something called um, uh, conditional UI. Um, and, and conditional UI works in a way where Passkeys integrate into the Autiful experience for the user. Users are very familiar with Autiful today. That is how password managers mostly present themselves to users and say, hey, there is a password available here for this site. Passkeys integrate into that um, so that a user wanting to sign into a service, they don't really even need to know that a passkey exists. The moment they click into a username field, um, the system will pop up and say, hey, don't go any further here. You can just click on the passkey that you want to use and immediately you will be signed in. Uh, and I'll talk a little bit more in the presentation about that. But those are the three things for me that differentiates traditional FIDO credentials uh, from, from pass keys. Uh, and it's really nothing to do with a protocol as such, but just a different way of thinking and a different way of, of managing these particular credentials on, on devices. So this is called uh, Capabilities Overview of Android. So I guess I should talk a little bit about Android. Um, we have made an announcement last week, Wednesday, October the 12th. Uh, we announced passkey support for developers. Uh, it is available as part of Google Play Services, the beta channel. Uh, beta channel is open to everyone, anyone to sign up to. Uh, you can just Google Google Play Services beta. Uh, and the moment you sign up for this with a particular Google account, uh, you will be able to then get the latest updates on your device within hopefully a couple of minutes. Uh, and then everything that I'm going to talk about here is then available for you. Um, we will be releasing most of this later November, early December. Um, so general users should be able to get the same capabilities at that point. They don't have to be subscribed to the beta channel, but we did want to give folks a bit of a leg up here, um, developers in particular, so that you can start testing and making sure that your website works with passkeys, especially if you've already built support for, you know, passkeys on other platforms. Uh, it should be as simple as like enabling support for our user agents as well, uh, and then just double checking that everything works uh, so that when the public release uh, later this year rolls around, uh, users can start to use that as well. Um, now, let's look a little bit at the capabilities in particular that this release enables. Um, so first, you're able to create passkeys. 
Um, you know, creating a FIDO credential, creating a passkey, registering a... What was that? All right, let's click again. Um, that's okay. Um, creating a passkey is fairly simple. It is usually the process that you start with. Uh, and I'll show a little demo here later just to show everyone how this all hangs together. But that's usually step one, making a passkey. Um, Typically, when it came to physical security keys that some folks here might be familiar with, they were kind of like hidden, kind of like the back room. You had to click through a bunch of different options. You normally have to set up two-step verification or multi-factor authentication, and then you get to adding these types of FIDO credentials. With passkeys, we think this should work differently. We think passkeys should be front and center. Uh, Marcia did a presentation yesterday in the keynote as part of kind of PayPal's uh, um, journey towards passkeys. Um, that is exactly the right way that we think passkeys should be uh, displayed and should be proposed to users, which is basically when a user signs into their service, um, do a quick detection, figure out whether the platform that you're on supports passkeys. There are APIs available for that. Uh, and once you detect that that's true, offer the user up the ability to make a passkey right then and there. Uh, Google has done some user research. Um, you know, what we found is that words like secure, um, and you know, security and even privacy to a certain extent is not really what resonates with users at that moment. What resonates with users is easy and quick and simple. So kind of like do some kind of a pitch, tell the user, hey, here is a quick way uh, to deal with signing in next time. Do you want a passkey? Yes, user clicks the button. And immediately in Android, if you have the Google Play services beta on, um, you'll see this familiar pop-up popping up on, on the left. Um, the pop-up talks about creating the passkey. I like to think of the passkey as that little gray block. The passkey has what we call a display name, kind of like a friendly name. Uh, if you look at account choosers for different types of services, if you have a Google account, and you want to switch to a different Google account, you normally see three familiar things in account choosers. You see some kind of like a friendly display name. That can be the user's full name. It can be something the user has chosen, whatever. There's usually a username associated with it. I think of usernames mainly as like a legacy thing. Today, it's mostly an email address. Uh, it might be something different, especially financial services like to use things that's not email addresses in usernames. Uh, and then there's usually a profile picture associated with it as well. In this particular release, the profile picture is not something you can set yet, although I would like that profile picture to be able to be set at some point. Um, so I think about that gray block as the passkey being created. It's this whole context right there, right? User creates the passkey, and then we also tell the user at the bottom end there that this passkey will be associated with a particular Google account. Um, that passkey will be synchronized to that Google account down there. If you have more than one, you can go and change it. Uh, but typically, that means that the passkey is now resilient. Next time you show up on another Android phone and you sign into that Google account, you're going to get this passkey back. Um, you, you know, say continue, hopefully. Uh, and then next, you need to do some form of user verification. Um, and that can be whatever this is, uh, the system supports. Uh, we support any class 3 or strong biometric in our current implementation, uh, which means typically fingerprint. Uh, face um, and also any form of screen unlock that the user has set up, any knowledge factor, pin pattern password is all supported um, at this point in time. Um, pass keys don't work if you don't have a screen lock set up on your phone. So we're hoping this is another way to kind of like, you know, get more users into uh, actually setting up good hygiene for their devices in order to lock them. Um, so once you have set this and you have created the pass key, of course, now the user has one. And then next time when the user comes back to this particular service, now the user will need to use the passkey. Um, two ways of doing that. Uh, I think folks by this point is probably fatigued. Everyone has been talking about this this week. I'll say it again. Um, on the one side, you have the option, um, you know, an explicit option where you can put a button that says, hey, here's where you click to sign in with a passkey. That's how we envisaged WebAuthn and FIDO working on, you know, earlier. Um, but we hit a bit of a, of a snag, uh, which is, if we just put that button randomly on a page, most users will just be thoroughly confused, click it, even if they don't have pass keys, and they'll end up in like, uh, you know, kind of a dead end. Um, so we have this new uh, type of mechanism called conditional or mediated UI, which I talked about earlier, uh, which is this autofill integration, which means you keep your username or your username and password field just as it is today. Um, you add some annotations to it, you do some stuff, which we'll talk about a little bit later, and then pass keys, if there's available on that current system, just magically ends up being one of the items in your autofill list. Um, so the pass key gets displayed to the user right there, user clicks on the pass key, they use their fingerprint or you know, unlock their device, typical screen lock action, and once they've done that, um, they will just be magically signed in. So hopefully this experience on the left should be fairly familiar to users. That's not to say the one on the right is totally useless, in a world maybe 5, 10, 15 years from today where there is no more usernames and passwords, maybe that's all we need. Maybe we just need a button. 
But for now, I think integration and stepping up into the world of passkeys, the conditional and the mediated UI probably makes the most sense uh, for most websites that needs to deal with both uh, types of users. Some users who have stepped up into the passkey world and some users who, who have not done that quite yet. Um, and then, of course, you know, if you uh, click, if you have the button implementation where you have to click the button first, then Android will render a, a list of available passkeys for this particular URL or this website, the RPID. Uh, user gets to pick it. Of course, if you use the conditional or the mediated UI, you'll go straight to the bottom sheet here on the right, where you just have to touch your finger and then sign in. Um, so these two um, screens are essentially being used for the for the button press, but one of them is being bypassed when you when you do auto pull. Um, so then I wanted to quickly just you know a uh, little nod to how passkeys are encrypted uh, and and stored. Um, users will see this on Android now as well. The very first time you use a passkey uh, or you try to set up a passkey on a device, you'll see a, um, a little screen that looks a little bit like the one on the left there. Um, because remember, passkeys are always end-to-end -end encrypted. So the private key that lives on your device is end-to-end -end encrypted and then stored in the Google Cloud. We can't see it. Uh, and then by the time that you need to use it on a different device, you need to decrypt that passkey locally, of course, again, uh, to get you know, access to it. The mechanism we use for encryption decryption there, or the, the essentially the key we use to decrypt the key that does the actual encryption and decryption is based on the user's screen lock. So it's a knowledge factor. Whatever you have set up on that device as the screen lock, be it the pin a pattern or a password, that is used to unlock the master key that actually does the encryption decryption for pass keys. I think it's a similar approach roughly from the uh, UI perspective as what users used to on iCloud Keychain. Um, but we use a mechanism that, that uh, essentially enforces end-to-end -end encryption for all, for all pass keys uh, on, on the particular device. So if you're seeing a screen like the one on the left, that's the first one where you give Google essentially consent to use your lock screen in this manner. And then the second one here on the right is whenever you go and you set up a new Android device, you're going to need to prove that you know the lock screen of one of your other devices that was part of the pass key synchronization model. Um, so that one will give you a drop down, and if you have more than one phone, you can select it. We're still kind of like testing and seeing how well users do with this, because it's not the lock screen of the current device, although we know most users, when setting up a new phone, they just pick the lock screen of the old phone anyway, so mostly it should be. Um, whether that's good or bad, I'm not going to comment on that. Um, so using passkeys from another device, that's the other thing that I said we enable. Um, pretty simple, right? If you're on a device and you want to log in um, and the user clicks the sign in with a passkey button or uses the conditional UI, I'll show that in a demo in a second, um, you get to use your phone. Bring your phone close together. In some cases, you need to scan a QR code just so we can disambiguate the devices wanting to talk to one another. In a room like this, there's lots of phone and lots of laptops. So we need to figure out which are the two that we want to have communicate to one another. Typically use a QR code for that. And once we've done that, the two devices start to talk to each other, and you can use a passkey from the phone directly on one of your devices here. Um, so passkeys are part of Google Password Manager. Um, as we've said before, we aim to allow pluggable third-party um, passkey providers in Android as well at some point. Um, and that's something else that we'll be talking about a little bit more this week. Today, our passkey implementation on Android is available as Google Password Manager. So that's our mechanism for providing passkeys, but we aim to make that something that the user can pick in the future. Um, demo time. How much time do I have left here? Cool. That's more than enough. All right. So let's do a quick demo. I want to do a shout out to whoever set up the Wi-Fi network. There is no client isolation, which means I can connect my phone directly to my laptop, which is good for me. Um, I haven't seen a Wi-Fi network set up like this in a long time, but it is great. Um, okay. If everything works, will it? No? Uh, let me make sure I am set up here. Oh, I need to be on this Wi-Fi network. Give me a quick sec. I don't know why that comes up. And let's try this again. Click, start. Cool. All right, so here is the demo. I'm going to put my Android phone, which has the latest Google Play Services beta installed, and my Chrome Canary on the left. And the reason why I'm using Chrome Canary is the features for conditional UI right now is in Chrome Canary. Uh, all the other stuff should work with whatever generic Chrome build is out today. Um, so in this particular demo, I'm going to start on my phone, right? I said earlier on, the first thing user has to do is they have to create a passkey, right? So let's look at how passkey creation works. User goes, goes to log into my fictitious bank here called TriBank. Um, I have to enter a username and I have to enter a password. That's how we all log in today, right? So I go ahead, I refresh here, make sure that doesn't 
bother me sometimes. This takes a little while to refresh. There we go. So first thing I have to do is I have to enter my username. Second thing I have to do is I have to enter my password. And of course, when doing this, mostly any bank today uh, would also do some additional challenges, maybe send me like a SMS one-time password or a push notification to an app. Something else usually also happens at this point. Once I have fully logged in and gone through all of my challenges, the website goes and it detects that I'm on a platform supporting passkeys. You do that through the use is you VPAA call and there's other conditional mediated like checks you can also do. Once you've done that, um, the website says, hey, you don't have a passkey yet, do you want one? And here, you know, this is about, you know, better protection than passwords because it's a banking site, you know, maybe that resonates better. Uh, the user says, yep, create me one. And at that point in time, uh, there is some promo that Android then serves the very first time to kind of just familiarize users with passkeys a little bit. So I say, yep, give me one. Uh, my passkey pops up there, uh, the metadata around it, and I click continue. Remember, I have to touch my fingerprint. And at that point, I now have a passkey created. So I'm fully signed in. Um, it didn't really take away too much of the process. Remember, users are wanting to sign in because they want to make a payment or check their balance. They don't really want to create a passkey. So we tried to make the process as streamlined as possible to get them to what they ultimately wanted to do and not interrupt them too much. So user is signed in. They do whatever they want to do. Next day, they come back to their uh, TriBank website and they want to sign in. Quick and easy, click into the username field and immediately the Autofill system will pop up and say, hey, you now have a passkey. So I say, that's great. Sign me in, take my fingerprint, touch it to the sensor, and I should be signed in. So pretty straightforward. Something else we could do is um, if I want to download the TriBank app from the App Store, because passkeys and FIDO credentials work between app and web, I can open the TriBank app, um, and I can sign in here as well. So I have multiple options here. Again, I have the sign in with a passkey button there just to show that's an alternative way of implementing this. I'm not really going to get to that in this demo. I'm rather going to click into the account name field and when I do that, again, the system detects, hey, you've got a passkey. I say, yep, I want to log in using that passkey. I want to touch my fingerprint, and I should be signed into my app as well. So the same passkey I just created on the web, of course, works between the uh, web and app um, interchangeably. So that's all great, but what if I now want to go to my desktop to make some more payments, um, and I want to sign in there? Never signed into TriBank on my desktop before, so I go to the login page, and I click into the username field, ready to start typing my username. But in this point, the system interjects, and it says, hey, you can use a passkey on a different device. So someone told me that's a good idea, so let's try it. I'll click it. Um, I've never had any phone connected to this laptop before, so I have to like tell this laptop about the phone. Uh, to do that, I open the scanner here or the camera. Let's move my phone away a little bit. Sometimes it pops up the wrong place. And it's real. See? Yeah. I can go there. I can click use a passkey. I can allow these two devices to talk to one another. And at that point in time, the, the uh, passkey that I just created in the web should pop up on my phone here. I don't know. It's taking a little while. Let's put it a little closer. Maybe there's a lot of Bluetooth stuff happening. I don't know. Uh, we might have to do that twice. Uh, um, so what should happen at this point is we should have a connection being made from the phone to the laptop, and the passkey list should pop up, and I should be able to choose my passkey, and that should allow me to sign in. Let's see what happens if that times out, I guess. Um, I don't know. I feel like Bill Gates in the Windows 95 demo here. Um, with no one else to blame up on stage. Um, let's try that again. Let's try that again. So let me do that. That'll be an interesting one to look at the logs at later. So I will say it's not completely wasted. Let's do that again. Let's open the camera. Let's do that. Let's click use passkey. Let's allow these devices to talk to one another. Um, there we go. Cool. This time it works. Um, Second time's the charm. I see my passkey. I click it. I touch my fingerprint. And I should be signed in. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> so what's different this time is the website here detects that I'm on a device that also supports passkeys. And remember, this is a Mac. This was an Android phone. So the two key stores are separate. The same passkey is not available here. Uh, let's take this away. I don't need the phone anymore. That's a big phone. All right. Let's take that away. No phone. Go away. Absolutely. So at this point, I can now, ooh, it comes again. Oh, my ad, let me close the app. I know how to do that. All right, cool. So I can create a passkey on the local device because I'm on a Mac with a fingerprint sensor. I say, yep, give me a passkey. Uh, Chrome pops up and says, hey, here's your passkey. Uh, yeah, I want to create it. Take my fingerprint, touch it to the fingerprint sensor on my MacBook, and now I have a local passkey. What that means is next time that I come back to TriBank on this particular device, I do not need my phone again because I just made a second passkey for TriBank. If I now click into the username field, I should actually see one more credential pop up here, which is the local passkey I just created. 
can click on that, touch my fingerprint, and I should be able to get signed in immediately. Because I am out of time, and I really just included this to make up time, which I don't have to do, here are some code samples of how to create all of this stuff I have here. Here is the creation, and next is going to be the using of the passkey, specifically with conditional UI or with mediated UI. Um, if folks are interested, take a picture or just download the slides later. I'm sure it will be right there. Um, we still need to solve some problems. Uh, we're not pretending that everything is completely done. This is my last slide, I promise. Support third-party credential providers. We need to support some way of moving users from ecosystems to another, right? If I want to change from Apple to Android or change from you know, a third-party credential provider to something else, there needs to be some solution to that. Uh, we don't think that's just putting passkeys in the file on disk. Personally, I don't, but like, you know, other folks have other ideas. We need to figure out that problem. We need to solve that. And lastly, we need adoption. That's where we need everyone's help here in the audience. We now have built this. Now we need everyone to come. So um, we're right now in the, I guess, like before even the, the early adopter stage here, we're kind of in the, in the, in the innovation stage. If you uh, quote the uh, uh, innovators, uh, uh, I, I guess, like uh, crossing the chasm here. Um, so, so if folks here are interested in learning more about passkeys or need any help, we'll be here this week. And we're also super happy to talk to folks in order to help with the adoption stage at this point. Thank you. Thank you very much, Christian.